One of the most popular models in valuation is the discounted cash flow model or DCF. And to use a DCF, you can either calculate the free cash flow to the firm or you can calculate the free cash flow to equity and input it into the model. If you are using FCFF in the DCF model, the output will be the firm value. And if you are using FCFE as an input to the DCF model, the output will be the equity value. So in this video, we are going to look at how we calculate free cash flow to the firm FCFF and free cash flow to equity FCFE from financial statements. I'm going to use a hypothetical financial statement of a company for the year ended 31st December 2019. So we have the three financial statements, which is the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement. The figures given here are in millions of dollars. We'll start with the income statement. The company has revenues of 5,000 million and operating costs of 4,000 million. And the EBITDA, of course, is revenue minus operating costs, which is 1,000. Depreciation is 250, it's given. And your earnings before interest and tax is 750. Okay, which is uh, EBITDA minus depreciation. Interest expense is 200 million. So your EBT or earnings before taxes is 550. We assume that taxes is 40%. So that will be 40% times 550. So that will be 220. Your earnings before tax minus taxes. So you will get $330 million. And let's assume that dividend payments is 80 million. Okay. Now we move on to balance sheet. So we have uh, the numbers for 2018 and 2019. We have the current assets comprising of cash and equivalents, accounts receivable and inventory. And we have for non-current assets, there is only gross property, plant and equipment. We minus accumulated depreciation and we get the net PPE. And then we have total assets. Then for liabilities, we have current and non-current liabilities. Under current liabilities, there is accounts payable, not payable, accrued taxes and expenses. And under non-current liabilities, I have long-term debt. And under equity, we have common stock. We have additional pay-in capital and retained earnings. And lastly, just to check that the total asset is equals to total liabilities and shareholders' equity. Then for the statement of cash flows, okay, this is a reconciliation from net income to net cash flow from operations. And then there is a cash flow from investing activities and cash flow from financing activities. And then we will calculate the change in the cash and equivalents for the year. And then we will add it to the cash at the beginning of the year, which is 390. So we will get the ending cash and equivalents at the end of the year, which is 520. And then there are some supplemental cash flow disclosures here. So just to show a bit of uh, reconciliation of uh, the financial statements, uh, what I'll do is I will try to show you how these numbers are linked up. So when we move on to the calculation of free cash flows, you'll be able to understand it better. Right, so net income of course is linked to, I'll just rebuild it again. So net income is from the income statement, of course. Depreciation is linked to the income statement. Okay, or we can actually take it from the balance sheet. If I, if you have the accumulated depreciation, you could just take the difference, 1350 minus 1100. So of course you will get the negative uh, form of it, but the amount in magnitude is the same. For accounts receivable, these are shown in the cash flow direction. So be careful when you calculate change in working capital, there is a way of doing it via the balance sheet. Okay, and when you interpret it from the cash flow statement, you have to be careful. So what I'm talking about here is, if you look at accounts receivable, the change here is from 630 to 690. So in other words, you are allowing your customers to owe uh, money. Okay, so that means your money is stuck in this uh, accounts receivable. If you take the change from the balance sheet, that will be 690 minus 630. So the change in accounts receivable is 60. Okay, from a balance sheet perspective, but from a cash flow perspective, there is an outflow there because you are using cash in this case. Okay, so when you talk about balance sheet changes, okay, a positive change in cash flow terms would be negative. Now, for inventories, again, inventory shows an increase of uh, from 380 to 450. So if I take the balance sheet change, that will be 70. 
Okay, but on the cash in the cash flow statement, you will see a negative 70 because we bought inventories that will be a use of cash. For accounts payable, if I take the difference of 250 minus 230, I'm getting 20 here. In other words, you are delaying payment to the suppliers. Uh, you are owing the suppliers another $20 million. So that is a source of cash or cash inflow. And for accrued taxes and expenses, if I take the difference, 140 minus 100, again, when you increase the liabilities, okay, that will be a source of cash. And of course, uh, so if you notice here that when the current asset increases, there will be a use of cash or cash outflow. And when the current liability increases, there is a source of cash or a positive cash flow. Now, if I sum up this, I will get a total of negative 70. In other words, your working capital is negative 70. Okay, there is a cash use of cash of $70 million there. So the total Cash flow from operating activities is 510, so just to show you the sum. And the purchase of fixed assets here, okay, we call this the capital expenditure or capex. And it shows negative 500, where do we find this figure? In the financial statement, in the balance sheet, you can take the difference in the gross PPE. So if you take the difference here, 3,006 minus 3,100, you get 500. Of course, when you buy more assets, there is a use of cash, so that is negative 500. Be careful with the uh, difference between balance sheet items and cash flow statements. Now, of course, uh, I can also try to obtain this using the net PPE. Okay, I could take the net PPE here, which is 2250 minus 2000, but don't forget, uh, you will have to add in depreciation. So I will need to add depreciation in order to get 500. Okay, so be careful if you are reconciling from net PPE or whether you're calculating from gross PPE. Okay, you can still get the same number, but be careful that for net PPE, take the difference, but add in the depreciation for the year. And then for financing activities, they have issued short-term borrowings and long-term borrowings here. So that's why we get a positive number. If you see a negative number here, it means that the company repaid or redeemed or retired part of its debt. And we see that there is a payment of dividends of 80 million. So there's an outflow. So the total will be 120. So there's a net cash inflow there. And the total, if you take 510 plus 500, so if I take 510 plus negative 500 plus 120, so this is the change in cash and equivalence for the year. And we'll add it to the beginning cash at uh, the start of 2019. So we'll get 520. Now we'll proceed to calculate the free cash flow to the firm and free cash flow to equity. Now the first variation of the formula for free cash flow to the firm is to start from net income plus non-cash charges plus after-tax interest minus capital expenditure capex minus working capital investment. Let's start from this formula. So we'll start with the net income which is 330 million. So that's equals to 330 million plus non-cash charges. Now, uh, keep in mind that non-cash charges are things like depreciation, okay, depreciation and amortization. It can be uh, gain and loss, gain and loss on sale of assets. Okay, so these are the typical things that could be non-cash charges. But for this case, there's only depreciation, that's 250. And then we plus interest, which is uh, 200 in this case, 200, and then multiply by one minus the tax rate. Tax rate is 40%. So that's 0 0.4. And then we have to minus capex and minus working capital investment. Now, what's the capex here? Capex in this case is 500. So we will minus 500. And then for working capital investment, you have to be a bit careful. For this formula, the working capital investment is based on the balance sheet changes. So there are a few ways how you can go about. If you are using the balance sheet changes, Okay, in other words, uh, I will calculate the working capital directly from the balance sheet or we can use these numbers. Uh, I'll show you how uh, the many ways of how you can do it, right? If you are basing it on the balance sheet changes, okay, what I'll do is, so I will create working capital, okay, and uh, let's just call this this. All right, so we have accounts, rece uh, accounts receivable, we have, uh, we have uh, inventory, we have... Uh, accounts payable and we have accrued taxes and expenses all right then uh, i'll link to the numbers here so the accounts receivable is uh, 630 inventory is 680 accounts payable is 230 
crude taxes is 100 okay and then I'll copy this over you get the same values now working capital in this case will be the current assets okay minus current liability so that's uh, 680 for 2018 okay and then for 2019 that will be 750 so if you take the change the change here is 750 minus 680 that's 70 so when you substitute it into the formula you will just type right minus 70 so minus 70 here means it's an outflow okay it's a use of cash because you increased your working capital there is a use of cash now if you're only given the cash flow statement then what you will do is you will sum up take take the sum of the changes in working capital here so negative 60 minus 70 plus 20 plus 40 that's negative 70 so immediately you can take the negative 70 here and replace it okay and replace it with this entire part okay you will just change this to negative 70 okay so you could either use the balance sheet numbers or you can use the cash flow numbers just be careful and make sure you know how to interpret the numbers all right with that we'll calculate so this will be equals to 130 million dollars to calculate free cash flow to equity you can start by using the free cash flow to the firm if you have it minus the after-tax interest plus net borrowing so from our previous calculation free cash flow to the firm is 130 million dollars so we'll take 130 minus interest expense which is 200 okay from the income statement multiply by 1 minus 0 0.4 which is 40 percent and then now we need the net borrowing so the net borrowing can be obtained from two parts okay if you are getting it from the cash flow statement so we have notes payable which is short-term debt plus long-term debt issuances so this is both these are both inflows so you will take 40 plus 160 so that will be 200 okay that's a positive 200 for net borrowing the, it means the company is borrowing money so there's a cash inflow if you are using the balance sheet to get the numbers uh, be careful just take just look at the change in balance for notes payable so 540 minus 500 okay so you just take to take the change okay and for long-term debt that will be 1007 minus 1540 so that's what uh, in total that's 200 okay so that's your net borrowing so that will be just to show there's 40 plus 160 but it's 200 so if you take the numbers and add up you will get 210 million dollars okay so that's your fcfe now we'll proceed to use other variations to compute the numbers so fcff can also be calculated by taking the cash flow from operations plus the after-tax interest minus capex so what's my cfo in this case so the CFO will be the net cash from operating activities, which is 510. So that's uh, 510 plus interest expense 200 times 1 minus 40% minus capex, which is 500. So that will be equals to 130 million dollars. Now, if you are starting from EBIT, or earnings before interest and tax uh, take note that you will have to take the EBIT after tax and then add in depreciation because it's a non-cash charges now the EBIT here would be 750 million so that's uh, 750 multiplied by 1 minus 40 percent and then plus depreciation which is 250 minus capex 500 minus working capital investment uh, earlier we obtained the numbers as uh, 70 so we minus 70 that will be equals to 130 million the next variation is to start from EBITDA okay which is before interest tax depreciation and amortization the difference you have to be careful here is you will still take after tax EBITDA but for the next term you will take the depreciation multiplied by tax rate so this is the depreciation tax shield so if I start from EBITDA I will take 1000 okay 1000 here multiplied by 1 minus 40% plus depreciation which is 250 times 0 0.4 minus capex minus working capital investment so that will be equals to 130 million dollars as well now there's another variation for fcfe which if if you're starting from net income let's say if you don't have the free cash flow to the firm you can start from net income and then you will add in the non-cash charges like depreciation minus capex minus working capital investment just remember to add in net borrowing 
So the only thing that is not here, if you compare this to the FCFF formula, is we don't add back the interest after tax. Because for the shareholders, it is after paying interest to the debt holders. So net income here is 330 million plus depreciation 250 minus capex 500 minus working capital investment 70 and net borrowing as we have seen earlier is 200 okay which is 40 plus 160 now if you calculate that you will get a total of 210 million dollars now you can calculate fcfe starting from ebit as well but just remember to take ebit after tax plus depreciation and remember to minus interest after tax so just to show that it reconciles, so EBIT is uh, 750 times 1 minus 0 0.4 plus depreciation 250 minus interest expense 200 times 1 minus 0 0.4 minus capex 500 minus working capital investments uh, 70 and then plus net borrowing 200. So if you calculate that, you will get $210 million. Okay, so it reconciles back to the formulas that we have used previously. So the next variation is based on EBITDA. So we'll take EBITDA after tax plus depreciation times the tax rate minus interest after tax. So EBITDA is 1000. So that's 1000 times 1 minus 0 0.4 plus depreciation 250 times 0 0.4 minus interest 200 after tax minus capex 500 minus working capital investment 70 plus 200 net borrowing. And if you calculate that, you will get $210 million as well. Why are the numbers reconciling? Okay, if you compare these two, so if I take 750 times 1 minus 0 0.4 plus 250, so if I just compute this portion, okay, what you will get is 700. Okay, so that's what we are getting here. Now, if I do the same thing for this component, the EBIT after tax, uh, the EBITDA after tax plus depreciation times the tax rate, what you will get is also 700 okay so you will also get 700 so these two components are effectively equals to each other now for the last variation we'll start from the cash flow from operations okay so cash flow from operations earlier is 510 so we we'll start from 510 here minus capex which is 500 plus net borrowing 200 so that gives us 210 million dollars it's important to practice calculation as much as possible so that you get the hang of the formula. After a while, you'll be able to compute the free cash flows without much difficulty.